I appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, I'm going to go gather some tools. I'm going to leave you here on the seedlings. Uh, today's about 45 degrees. It's really beautiful weather. And uh, the seedlings, the little guys are out to get some sunshine. They, uh, they look really terrific. One of the things that I've noticed this year about cold crops is that a cold crop likes to jump once it comes out if it's too warm. And so I should have transplanted these sooner and had them buried up to this. There's a little mark. Let me see if I can show you. Let's see here. See on this one, how they're the, this woody stemmy part and then the, the vegetative part, the vegetable part of the plant, but that woody stemmy part should be underground. And I should have already taken and put some extra soil in this to stabilize these cold crops. They need a little wind to toughen up, but too much wind and they suffer. Asparagus really excited about it it's doing really well still do not see any asparagus in the asparagus bed yet i'm not sure how much damage the chickens have done to this bed but um got a little bit of garlic coming up but let's go down and look at the cold frame and i've gathered a few tools it's not exactly a first peak i was down in the yard earlier and uh, decided to take a little look. I guess the girls are laying this afternoon, but uh, they'll have to wait. <clears throat> Got seven eggs from them today, and that's been about three days since I checked last. I was checking their water and stuff. They won't give me eggs for a little while. They don't have any good water. I don't know what that was flying through, but uh, we're, we're, I'm seeing a huge increase in the number of birds down here. You can see where I kind of took the first peak. Uh, I was down here just piddling. And you see the plants. I'm curious as to what that is. Um, it could be anything. Remember, we've got the, the salad onions, and then we've got turnips, and we've got radish. We've got beets, and we've got uh, two other styles of onion, bunching onions and uh, red creoles. Or No, the chives are at the top, all of the... Red creoles and the bunchings are down here. Anyway, I'm gonna open this up. Let me set y'all up somewhere here. I guess I can put you on my bucket so you can see. Let's just see here. First look inside the cold frame after the snow. Get this all. I see quite a few little green heads. I'm excited. This is like uh, finding treasure for me. Just set this out of the way. And I don't want to be adding any cold. Really? So you can see these, this would be the turnips. And then the French breakfast radish have both come up. The only thing we've done here is watered outside, put it in this box, 
And then a couple of times I came by and just opened the box and closed the box just to let it breathe. And I'm um, checking soil moisture to see if it needs a little water. You can see the soil's really dark. We watered it in real good when I put this in and it's good now. That's really cool, I'm excited. I don't know what this is. One of the keys this year for me, running these beds, see the lady beetle? Running these beds wild and natural like this is, <clears throat> there's gonna be a lot of weed pressure. And I've got to distinguish in the seedling phases what is good, beneficial plants and what is not. But uh, that's not a scary thing. It's just a learning process. And then uh, wild edibles, if she's available, she knows a lot about that sort of thing. I don't think anything's in that. We're gonna plant this. This side will be planted by the almanac with the roots. Uh, seems like that's the 18th through the 22nd that we'll be planting that side, just like this side. We're also gonna be planting some carrots then. I'm probably gonna plant some carrots along the front edge of the bed, maybe all the way down, I don't know. But here's the natural bed that I built the other day and I got these leaves on here just in time. They're gonna capture this snow and nitrogen and help them compost and break down. And then there's plenty of nitrogen in the chicken. I wish that I had gone a little further and gone ahead and used the rest of the chicken manure, but it's, it's here in the bags. And that side is completely undemended right now. And this side is concentrated the amendments where I could, where I got the thickness that I wanted. And then um, the chicken manure we had more of, so I got the thickness we wanted and I was able to spread it out over the entirety of the garden and um, where, the, where you see the leaves. And on that side, it just got a little bit of chicken manure, but I'll probably feed that side with rabbit manure uh, this spring. Uh, we got a pretty good load of rabbit manure and then that's the bed that we'll start building this year for next year. And I've still got to figure out where the back end of these go. I need a, it's on a slight slope. So I really need some water catchments. So I just don't end up farming on these little slick muddy paths. Water needs to, like a feather, come down the landscape. But I thought I'd just jump on and, and do a quick live. See these, got a little bit of coal burn on the blueberry. Mulberry is tough as nails. This blueberry looks really good. I might have some trouble with bamboo. There's bamboo in this and these, um, I don't know what you call these things but they produce these little grape looking berries that look sort of like grapes, false grapes, fox grapes, possum grapes. I don't know what you call them, but uh, they're thorny. They're hard to get to the root of. And if you don't get the root out, they come back. This thing will grow into a pretty good sized tree. Of course, there's honeysuckle and goldenrod. <clears throat> I think this year, Charles Dowding, I was watching his channel and he built a huge pond. It's amazing. Everything the man does is amazing, but he's got an area that he's gonna sow some wildflowers. And I'm thinking, I'm just gonna pull this cardboard up and I'm gonna sow wildflowers here. So I've got a central attraction to the gardens to uh, keep the bees in this area. I'm gonna be doing a lot of bee feeding. The bee boxes come in in March. And um, <laughs> I'm not ready for bees at all yet. I am not ready for bees at all. Hey, Misha, how are you doing? Oh, hey, Wendy. Wendy knows about biting off a lot and not being ready for it, but pulling it through. If, if that's Wendy Hartnett, have you seen her greenhouses? Unreal. She's done a great job.
I don't know who's still here, who's still not. Thanks for uh, opening my cold frame with me and uh, seeing that we do have a few little veggies there that have sprouted. I'll put that lid on. I'm just gonna let it breathe a little bit. I really need to get back down there and put that lid on so it captures the heat of the day. We've removed all the insulation. Y'all have a great afternoon and thanks for stopping by.